Welcome back to Balloon Frenzy. I am Justin, and this is the second time I'm recording this tutorial because the first time I was using the wrong microphone input, and I, I recorded two parts that way. So let that be a lesson to you. If you want to save work, if you're recording tutorials, make sure you check your audio every single time you hit record. But anyway, if you've been following along, this is the Old Man Justin series where we go over how to make you look old. We are now focusing on the hair and how to change the hair color. So that in the last video, we just made a simple mask, which is this thing here. And you can see where that mask is affecting that color on our footage over here. And here's the color balance, but we can change the color like that but you can see that the shape is not a very complicated shape and so it's spilling over the hair onto the background which makes it look kind of terrible so in this video what we're going to do is create a mask that follows the contours of the hair and the individual hairs that are sticking out because that's a very complicated shape we can't actually shape that ourselves so we're going to use the footage to help us with that. Now, I want to point out that the words mask, key, and mat can kind of be used interchangeably in filmmaking. Now, I know there are probably some experts out there saying, no, no, they can't. They have specific meanings. Well, they all kind of do the same thing, which is to show parts of the footage and hide parts of the footage. And if you don't like it, well, that's tough. So deal with it. Okay, so let's get started. We don't need this window right now. I'm just going to shrink that up here so we can have, see this a little bit more and zoom out okay so let's disconnect some of these you can press Control and then right click and drag to disconnect a whole bunch of stuff here which is pretty cool i'm going to just shift select those and h to hide those for now we're going to just move those out of the way i'm going to hide this one as well move it out of the way i'm going to delete these two and then hook that one up here okay so we're just going to manipulate this footage in order to create that mask so first thing i'm going to do is add in a converter separate rgba put that here and this gives us your channel so this is the red channel and if i control shift and then left mouse button i can cycle through all of these so we've got our red channel green channel and blue channel. And what I'm looking for is the channel with the most contrast. So that would be this one. And then I'm going to add in a converter color ramp. Put that right there. And with the color ramp, what we can do is drag these in towards each other. And you can see we are creating a black and white mask. And you can see the effect that that's having. Now, if we Take the black and cross it over the white, it inverts that. And now you can start to see we're going to use the contrast between the black and the white for these individual hairs that are coming out. So everything in the white is going to be shown and everything in the black is going to be invisible. So we can adjust this, but as you can see, it's not even. You can see this side of the face is white with the background being black, but this side of the face we have the hairs are black and the background is white. And that is because if we just go back to our original footage, you can see we have a different sort of contrast going on in three different areas actually. So here we have very light hairs on a dark background. Here we have dark hairs on a light background. And here we have dark hairs on a grayish background. So if we come back to our color ramp, you can see that if we just focus on this side and get it the way that we want it to be, making as much detail with the hairs as we can. And you see down here, it's not enough. So we've got to continue to make sure that's out of the picture. So something like that. All right, so like that. But as we come up around the top of the head, you can see that actually these hairs are starting to disappear. So all of this has just completely been swallowed up. Um, so then what we would have to do is then adjust it for the top. We want to try to have everything in here as white as possible and everything in here as black as possible uh, without getting rid of any sort of detail. So something like this. But now you can see 
we don't have any edge over here and we still have our white background over here. So then we come over here and then we adjust it for the left individually, which we would have to invert it like this because we want the hairs to be white and the background to be black. And I know you're probably saying, but Justin, what about the rest of the image? Well, that is where our simple mask comes back in here. So we can actually combine if we take these nodes here that we had before with our mask and our alpha over and plug these in, of course, this needs to go into the top layer here. And then if we make this the factor here, you can see that just this area is being shown. But remember, we want the background to be black, so let's change the background to black. We don't have to worry about the rest of the image, we just have to worry about what's here in the hair. All right, so there's a start, but remember we have three different areas that we have to have three different settings for our color ramp, which means we are going to have to actually create three separate masks and then combine them all together at the end. So let's get started with that. Uh, first, I'm going to make sure I'm on frame one. Adjust the existing mask to the top here. And what I'm going to also do is just select all of them, press V, and then select free. That way I can actually rotate these handles uh, independently of one another. So it gives us a little bit better of control. And so what I'm gonna do with this one is just isolate the top portion here. But I'm gonna adjust the color ramp over here to match the top of the head like we want it. So something like that. And then I'm going to adjust these here to only cover the part where the top of the head meets the black background. And uh, I'm actually going to use this little part of my hair bangs for my curve. If you press N over here, you can also come and adjust the feather offset. So sphere, root, sharp, I don't know. I don't actually like a lot of them. <laughs> Maybe smooth is the best way, but I always feel like you have to just to get any sort of real feather smooth, you have to just crank that out. It just seems too far to me, but uh, I'm not going to focus on that right now. We're just going to put that something like that. And I'm not focusing on the edge of the hair where it meets the face yet, uh, just the outside here. Now at this point, some of you are going to ask why I'm not creating multiple mask layers here, and I will get to that later. But I'm not going to, I'm just going to close this, and instead we're going to come up here and create another mask. Now I'm just going to rename this to top, and then we're going to create another mask. Rename this to left, shift A to add in a circle, G to grab and move that over here come to our nodes and duplicate these. We'll move them up first and then shift D to duplicate. And then we're gonna plug these in here like that. And we're gonna change top to left. And now if I refresh that by pulling that out and plugging that back in, now we can see our new mask here. So now what we wanna do is adjust our color ramp accordingly. And let's just go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so that we can see that. And remember, we want the inside of the head and the hair to be white and the background is black. Okay, so let's do that again. We're going to move these up. And I'm just gonna duplicate these. Plug them in. And then we are going to make another mask, name this right, add in a circle, and change our mask here to right, and we'll have to refresh this and adjust our color ramp accordingly. Now, depending on your footage, you may want to add another point. Maybe these, there aren't enough points here. The way you do that, um, it's a little bit tricky because in order for it to work, you actually have to ha make sure everything is deselected. Once everything is deselected, just control click on the curve wherever you want that point. And then um, you'll have to press V and change it to whichever handle that you want here too, if you want the handles. And there you go, you have another point. 
Now, I don't think I need that, at least not there. So I'm just going to delete that point and I'm going to make it over here instead. So I'm using this as a guide over here. Okay, we might not be able to get everything in here white, but that is okay, especially up here because that's going to be overlapping with our top one. So we've got that done, and now we've got three of these here with their perspective color ramps, and let's combine them now. So let's clean things up here a little bit. We're going to move these over here, and uh, you can do this however you want, but I like to just make sure everything's deselected. Uh, take these three here and then press Control G to make them a group and it will bring you inside of the group. That's why you see this green background here. Just tab to go out of that and then you have your group here. Let's bring that down here. Same thing with these. Control G, tab, and these three, Control G and tab. All right, so now we can combine these here a little bit better. Um, this one has a, an output, but these two don't have outputs. Uh, so just tab back into there, make sure this is plugged into that output. Same thing here. Okay. Because we're going to need that to combine them. So add in a color mix, change mix to screen, and then just start combining them. I'm going to duplicate this one because we're going to do the same thing here and here. And then that goes into our viewer node. And there we go. You can see what we have so far. We're going to have to do some work right here, it looks like. So let's come back up here and just start adjusting. And it looks like we might have to adjust our feathering over here on this side. Um, so that is going to be on our top one, which I think is this one. So tab into that and then we can adjust it here accordingly. Oh, and uh, for the feather, actually, we need to do this one top and then just that feather. And I'm actually bring this down. Yeah, in here like this. Um, I'm not too much worried again about the edges here. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But I do want to make sure, yeah, something like that. That's that's all right, right there. All righty, cool, cool beans. So this is what we have for our mask. So um, let's come out here and we're gonna use this now with an alpha over. And then we're going to plug in our original footage here in the top layer. And then this is not going into the image. This is actually going into the factor. So then we only have this showing, but we have it over the white background. So we're going to grab our original footage and plug that into the background as well. But remember that the bottom connection here is the top layer. And if we add in a color, color balance, we can plug that into the bottom one here. And now we can start changing the color of the hair. And you can start to see what's happening. You can see the edges of the hair are a lot more detailed and we don't have that nasty spilling outside onto the background. Now we still need to do a little bit of work here to adjust them, but that is the process. So um, I'm actually gonna leave this as this kind of darker blue type of thing here. It takes a lot of feathering to get a smooth transition here. You can kind of see what I'm doing to slowly transition it into the head here. So we don't have those harsh lines or spilling over onto the skin as well. So let's bring this up in here. And this looks like this is going to be a little bit sharper. Now this here, um, I'm not going to get unless I do a separate mask to mask that out. I'm not going to do that. Um, you can, if you want, just add another mask here and then you can combine all that all together. And here's maybe where you might want to create a another point. So deselect all, control click, and then V free. Okay, and you can be as meticulous with this as you want, but I'm not going to do too much more here. 
I think I'm going to leave it there. I think that's good enough. You can kind of see the point. Um, you can manipulate this however you like, but it doesn't look that good yet because it's pretty saturated. So all we have to do is just um, kind of just bring that down a little bit here with the saturation. And you can see now that isn't looking too shabby. So I'm going to hide this for a second or mute that. Add in a converter RGB to black and white. There we go. So we have our black and white hair there. And then this can be an additional on top of that, which I think looks a lot better when you desaturate everything first and then you saturate it. Okay, so that is how you create a mask that follows complicated edges. And it doesn't have to be hair. It could be any sort of complicated edge. Now, the reason we're doing it like this is because I didn't have a clean plate. I forgot to make a clean plate for the background. If you make a clean plate for the background, um, I think you can just use a difference key. And um, I think that will make it a lot better. I haven't played around with that. But if you don't have a clean plate, this is the way to go. Oh, and the reason uh, that we didn't use these mask layers is because there's no way to designate which layer to choose from. So since each of these have different color ramp settings, we have to have a separate mask input in information. So you can only choose between different masks. You can't actually choose between mask layers. Otherwise, it would be a lot easier just to create one mask with different mask layers and then choose from the mask layers. And if there is a way to do that and I don't know about it, please let me know. Okay, now, our masks are just stationary for one single frame. If I start playing our footage, you can see the mask doesn't follow along. So that's what we're going to fix in the next video. So stay tuned and you'll see me over there.